Hey folks, this is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about trail cameras, specifically when to take them down. If you're watching this video, you've already taken the time to determine what camera is best for you. You've spent the money to buy a camera, and you've taken the time to not only scout, but also determine where you're going to put that camera out in the woods. So today, I'm going to talk to you guys about five reasons why you should take your trail cameras down the end of February and beginning of March. Trail cameras give us a ton of data, and that data can be used to determine what deer are in your area, including any big bucks. But at the same time, we can use that trail camera data to determine where we're gonna hunt. It's also just fun to collect pictures. Whether or not you're checking your SD card every month or two, or you got a cellular camera that's sending you pictures back every day, it's exciting to see pictures of big buck, fishers, and even bears. One of the biggest reasons that I bring my cameras in the end of February and beginning of March is because of weather, just like you see today. That constant freeze thaw that you get in the winter time can cause damage to your camera over time. Uh, most of the time they're sealed up pretty good, but sometimes this extensive weather can cause cameras to go ahead and leak. You gotta remember that cameras are electronic and they only have a certain shelf life. So if you can get these cameras out of this severe weather for the end of February, March, April, and May, you're gonna go ahead and extend the life in which that trail camera is gonna last for you. The other thing to think about is when you have the cold weather, the batteries are getting drained over a period of time and whether you wanna figure it out or not, that's an expensive cost when you've got 15 or 20 trail cameras out in the woods. Another reason that I bring cameras in is to go ahead and uh, fix anything that's wrong with those cameras. Take a look at them, uh, see if they're working correctly, make sure I check the SD and memory cards to make sure they're working, uh, make sure the dates and the times are all set appropriately, make sure it's taken photos as it should, uh, sit down and make sure the batteries have not leaked in the camera and clean those cameras up. Oftentimes you got a lot of cobwebs and dirt and other stuff that build up on those cameras. So it's a lot easier to do this maintenance work on those cameras when they're actually in a warm garage with you rather than having to travel out to 15 different places on public land and go out and try and fix all those cameras individually. Makes it so much easier on me to do it all at once in the garage, and that way I know those cameras are set up and ready to go for the following year. Trying to figure out what deer survived, especially big buck, is another reason that I take trail cameras down, not immediately after hunting season, but at the end of February. Once hunting season ends, for example, here in New York State on January 1st, you've got a period of time in which bucks and other deer begin to get back into some normal behaviors between food and bedding on some of their winter deer yards. If you take a look to interpret some of this data, you can not only determine what bucks may have survived the year to be able to have an idea of what targets you're gonna start with the following season, but also how many deer survived. Uh, it's fun just to go ahead and watch some of these deer begin to lose their antlers. And as you begin to get an idea on your cameras of when deer are losing antlers, it also gives you an idea when to get out in the woods and start doing a little bit of shed hunting. I love to get the dogs out into the woods to shed hunt with me, uh, both Aspen, my little puppy Silver Lab, and Timber, my two-year-old Yellow Lab. Uh, right now though, dogs aren't too happy with me. I had a total knee replacement at the end of January, so probably most of my shed hunting isn't gonna happen this year, and uh, I'm chopping at the bit. Four weeks in, I'm sick of being on the couch. I can't wait to be out in the woods again scouting. I also bring my cameras in to save a little bit of money. When I'm talking about this, I'm discussing my cellular cameras and the data plan that you have to pay for every month. When you bring those cameras in for March, April, and May, you can suspend your service for a couple of months and you can save a little bit of money. Whew, definitely didn't wear the right clothes today. A little bit cold. Last reason that I bring my cameras in is to sit down and evaluate all the data that I have on those cameras, not only from the season itself, but also for a month or month and a half after season ends. I can sit down and put all this stuff on data tables and take a look at dates 
and determine where I had cameras set up that were in good places. And I got a lot of action with both buck and doe and also areas where I feel as though the cameras weren't really effective and I can go back and do some more e-scouting on the computer and get boots on the ground to determine where some better places are to put those cameras the next year. Oftentimes I've found that just looking at some of these cameras and taking a look at how many hunters pass by those areas gives me an idea on public land that it's an area I may not find mature buck or I just don't want to be around as much hunting pressure. I've walked all the way across this small pinch between the river and between the steep face glyphs of the farmer's fields and came right here upon this scrape. There's a rub over there. There's a fresh rub there. And if you take a look, it's going to get pinched right here again because it goes down into another ravine right here. And there's trails right down along that edge. I guess I picked the right day to go ahead and tape this video because I'm shivering and freezing, but one of the reasons I bring the cameras in because of weather, right? I hope that these hints helped you guys determine when you're going to bring your cameras in. I know it makes a big difference for me to get them in for about three months and take care of those cameras to make sure I have them prepped and ready to go for the following season. This is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Hope you guys liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the other videos that I have on my channel. We'll talk to you guys soon. Hope you have a great day. See ya.